Amen. How many believe his love is a boundless love? We appreciate you being here so much because if you weren't here, there wouldn't be any reason, I don't guess, for me to be here as a pastor, but you're here and I'm glad to see you. We want to get a good offering this morning for Brother Pooler. They've come up and they're going to be preaching a meeting this week starting tomorrow night in a small church down here near the mountains. Uh, he was telling me about it and he just wanted to come by and be with us and I felt led to ask him to preach and uh, help him a little bit on his finances coming up here and uh, he'll help us. I love to hear him preach and them sing. They're going to sing for us, I guess. I, they've lost a third of their singers. Uh, she went off and got married and he won't accept that excuse just like Jesus didn't accept excuse for the one that got married in the Bible. You know, but he has to live with it, amen. So married brother Roden's son, Caleb, and they're doing good. Uh, they were telling me that they're going on a cruise tomorrow to uh, 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 celebrate their anniversary one year. Man, they're doing great. <laughs> one year, I just celebrated 50 years. I didn't get to go on a cruise. No, <laughs> no that's okay. <laughs> we could have went on a cruise. We could have went to the moon, I guess, if we wanted to. <laughs> if we could afford it. But uh, thank God for this family. They're just a wonderful family. We've known them through the years, and, and we appreciate them so much. So when the ushers come, we're going to give a good offering this morning, and he's going to sing and preach. And uh, as I said, he's, a, he's an outstanding preacher. We appreciate him and his family. They spent their lifetime evangelizing, going around the country and preaching. They go anywhere they're asked to go. They're not picky. And uh, it, thank God for that because they love souls and we love them. Heavenly Father, we appreciate the Pooler family. It was a pleasant surprise that they've come today. And I pray that you'll bless them and their singing and their preaching today as they minister to us and bless the congregation and uh, our services today. Touch his meeting as he goes to preach where he is and let there be souls saved and move in the church of God and the Pentecostal movement around the world. Touch our nation and our country and give us revival in these last days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Man, Brother and Sister Pooler are coming and he, they're going to sing for us. And uh, like I said, I love to hear him preach. I love to hear him talk about his father in law. <laughs> hey, man, he preaches about him sometimes and it's good. He just uses points, you know, to bring out in his message. And I just love to hear him preach. Worship God as he come today. Good to be here this morning, amen, especially in the presence of the Lord. I didn't come by to sing or to preach. I thought I'd sneak in, amen, but that don't happen sometimes when you get around preachers like Brother Shortridge. But I appreciate them, amen, still holding on. I, I got up this morning and was praying and asking the Lord, amen, God, I just want you to refill me with the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Then I told my wife, I says, you know, I better dig out my Bible because I kind of got a feeling that he'll ask me to preach. I don't know why. It must have been just the Lord. Amen. But I remember back years ago, preachers like this would do that. Amen. They believe in that scripture, be instant in season, out of season. So you better be ready. Praise God. Amen. And then also we're looking forward to Brother Matthew 
preaching tonight. Praise God. Looking forward to that. Hallelujah. He was telling us about his nightmare. Amen. Now, you'll continue to have them. It's just a, it's just a thing. Amen. I remember I, I was uh, to preach a camp meeting, and, and I was so nervous about it. Right before I went, I dreamed that I got up, and there was this whole house full of people. I opened up my Bible, and every page was blank. I had no notes. I had no words to read. Amen. About that time, I said, this would be a good time to wake up. Amen. Come out of this. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Are we in Jesus? King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Okay. 
feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Praise God. Amen. Appreciate the privilege to be able to be here. Amen. And to share the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. As soon as I catch my breath, I'll preach. Hallelujah. Amen. It has been different since Jelena abandoned us. At first, amen, we were, we were having a good time and it was just me and her hadn't been Oh, what, what, 28 years, amen, without not having children in the house. We thought we was going to go back to our uh, young life, amen. And about three months later, she got tired of my humor, and amen, we got tired of looking at one another, and, and uh, God's helping us, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Everything's changed. But we're getting closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. I want to keep my eyes on Jesus no matter what. And as God keeps opening the doors, I want to walk through those doors and do God's will. Praise God. It's a privilege to be here this morning looking for God to touch us in a special way. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter number four. I'll begin reading in verse number six. Philippians chapter number four, verse number six. Praise God. We'll be preaching in a, in a little church about an hour and a half from here over close to Lake Lure. It's a little church that a man started uh, back in the, the early 19th century or 20th century rather. Amen. And uh, it's a real small place. And, and the, the grandson decided because they're not having nothing going on up there, two or three people would come maybe once a once a month, he decided, hey, man, we're going to revive that place. Hallelujah. And so every couple of months, he has a revival in there. Preached in there last year. And God just poured out his power and his glory. Hey, Amen. If 15 of you came, and with the rest that comes, hey, amen, it would pack that place out. So you might want to bring your own chair when you come. Hey, amen. It's so small. But the power of the Lord, amen, falls in that place and, and the glory of God. We've seen a miracle happen last year, amen. God, it doesn't matter where it's at. He's just looking for folks who want to worship him and glorify him and praise him, amen. But you keep us in your prayers, praise the Lord. Philippians chapter number four, beginning in verse number six says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known or be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity that we have to be in your presence. I ask, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come upon me. God, give me the right words to say and help me, dear Lord, to deliver your words. And I pray these words will touch hearts here this morning. I pray, dear God, that you'll move in a special way. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fill this house again. God, will give you the praise for it all in Jesus' name. And amen. You might be seated. I want to preach to us this morning this message that I've entitled, Turn Your Worries Into Prayers. By the lifting of your hand, is there anybody that ever worries? Amen. And then the rest of you are worried about if your shoulder's going to hurt if you raise your hand. Amen. And we all seem to worry about something. 
The enemy wants to throw things up in our faces and in, on our minds to keep our minds off of God. He wants us to continually walk in our troubles and in our sorrows. Amen. And if we'll dwell and worry on everything that's around us, the devil can keep our minds off of God. The word careful in this passage means to be full of care or full of worries. Uh, you know that expression, we have more irons in the fire than we know what to do. How many have those? We're busy. We live in a busy world and there's amen, more to do than we can even handle. And so we worry, am I going to get this done? Am I going to get that done? Folks will miss church because they're worrying. Amen. If they can get all of the things done that's in their life. Amen. The scripture says, be careful for nothing or don't worry about anything. If Jesus comes, amen, and touches your heart and looks at you and says, don't worry about anything, can you trust in the Lord? Can you trust in his words when he says, be careful for nothing or don't worry about anything? I can even be preaching to myself this morning because there's a lot of times I begin to worry. How is this going to happen? God, are you going to work this out? I know you're an on-time God. Oh, but I'd like for you to move last week on this situation. And we worry about things. The Lord wants his children to live free from worries, free from doubts and fears. All these things that come against us are distractions to destroy our faith in God. The devil wants you to worry. He wants you to fret. He wants you to think on all these things because he wants to destroy your faith in God. We have said many, many times, my God can do anything. Hallelujah. He answers prayer. Call on King Jesus. Amen. I know he hears me when I pray. Hallelujah. And we have that in our heart and in our mind that God's going to answer prayer, but yet we see still worry just a little bit. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. If you're worrying about anything today, you can lay it in the hands of the Lord. You can place it in this altar. You can cast all your care. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter Chapter 5, it tells us of the responsibilities of the man of God that we are to feed the flock and the responsibilities of the flock, amen, to cast all your care upon him. Hallelujah. If you don't get in the altar in every service, you're not living up to your responsibility. He wants us to come and pray. He wants us to lay everything in his hands so that we will live worry-free. Praise God. We cannot carry the distractions of this life and be free to walk with God. We must allow God to take full control and to turn our worries into prayers. Now, if everybody that raised their hand that says, you worry about something or some even worry about everything. If we prayed as much as we worry, we would all be great prayer warriors. Can you say amen? And we know prayer changes things. And if we can get in our minds uh, that the beginning, uh, when I begin to worry about something, uh, I begin to call on Jesus. Uh, amen. Every time the devil causes me to worry, uh, I call on the name of the Lord. Uh, I turn my worries into prayers. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, you'll have a prayer meeting every day. Uh, the presence of God will fill your home. Uh, it'll fill uh, you, your life, uh, and on your jobs. Uh, you will feel a difference in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things that causes us to worry 
Is it our present circumstances that we that seem to surround us all of the time? What am I going to do today, Lord? How am I going to make it through this? And we face decisions every day. Lord, I've got to make it through. I don't want to be another statistic. I don't want to fall by the wayside. I don't want to give up. I don't want to compromise. But that devil's working on me and working on me. Why don't you just give up? Why don't you just throw it all away? I don't know how many times the devil has fought me and we were kidding about, you know, when Jelena left and, and uh, the devil says, well, you're not going to stay busy anymore. You're not going to be able to do this and that. Uh, amen. And for two years before they got married, uh, folks would come up to us and says, what are you all going to do, brother? When she gets married, uh, amen, how are you going to make it? Uh, it's not, well, it isn't the same and it's not going to be the same, uh, but he's still the same. Hallelujah. Uh, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Uh, amen. And that's when we start praying uh, and we stop worrying uh, and we let God be God. Hallelujah. God knows how. Uh, God opens doors that no man can shut. Uh, God pours out his glory. Uh, his power and his anointing. Uh, and if every time we worry... Uh, We'll fall on our knees and cry out unto God. The power of the Lord will come against or come into us and touch us again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our present circumstances that seem to surround us. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and could pass the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? That word alas means an expression of pain. He's going through something. He's worrying about how big this enemy is. Alas, master, how shall we do? How many has ever looked at your spouse and said, what are we going to do now? My wife got tired of hearing that sermon. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hey, Amen. She said, I don't tell it right, but it seems like I remember her saying why don't you practice what you preach and have faith in God? And if she didn't say it, amen, it was a good sermon anyway. Praise the Lord. But because we need to believe in this word of God and we need to stop worrying. Alas, master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw and behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Praise the name of the Lord, church. It will turn our worries into prayers. And we'll cry out unto God. Hallelujah. He'll take eyes off of how big the enemy is and we'll see how big God is. We'll see hallelujah the heavenly host all around us and know everything's going to be alright if I'll just keep praying, if I'll keep trusting in God. Hallelujah. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Could it be or the fact that you worry about how much more others are blessed with than you are? You ever sit around and wonder why so and so is so blessed with things? Amen. And they won't hardly come to church. They won't serve the Lord. You're sacrificing. You're doing everything you can for the Lord. And yet others have more than you. Look at this one. And they'll boast and they'll tell you about their retirement plan and how they got it lined up and I'll be able to retire to such age and everything's going to be all right. We got a friend, a man that's put 30 years into a, 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 where he works. A man in a couple of years, he's going to be able to retire and he's, what, about 50 or 51 now? 
and he's telling this and this and this and this and and the devil wants to put in my mind that you had one of those jobs one day you had one of those jobs when you were young and you could have stayed with it. Uh, hey man, if you'd have stayed with it, you'd have been retired by now with all of those benefits. Uh, hey man, and I keep thinking back. Uh, yeah, and I could be dead. Uh, hey man, and I could be way out of the will of God. Hallelujah. Uh, because my father, uh, hey man, has a mansion waiting for me over there. Uh, hallelujah. The devil wants to do anything and everything in every conversation. Uh, to cause you to worry and to want to throw it all away and to give up. But church, it's not a time to give up. It's a time to pray. It's a time to call on God because God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Psalms 37 and 7 through 9 says, Rest in the Lord. How many value your rest? Can you raise your hand? Amen. How many's going to take a nap this afternoon? Amen. More is going to take a nap than value their rest. <laughs> Amen. And that rest means everything to you. It rejuvenates you. I had to take a nap on the way up here yesterday. Amen. I got somewhere, I think in Georgia, somewhere there, and and she was already sleeping, and and I was over there shaking and trying to stay awake. And I thought, man, I'm just gonna kill this devil. And I pulled off and parked in a parking lot and I slept for 30 minutes. Because I value that rest. That rest in the Lord. We must value. He said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about how much brother so and so has. Amen. We need to thank God for what he's given us. Hallelujah. And be content with such things as you have. If you've got Jesus, you've got everything. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got even more than everything. I'm telling you, church, it will turn our worries into prayers. The power of the Lord, it's going to refill us. That's what I'm praying for. God, just refill me with the Holy Ghost and give me everything that I need. Stir me up one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If we will pray rather than worry, we will find satisfaction. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Wow. Woo! Just to know he's by my side in every valley. Oh, yeah, we feel him on the mountaintop. We feel him when we're up there shouting, man, this is great. But to know that he's there every time I start to worry, I believe he just knocks on our heart's door and says, do you want to talk to me for a while? Do you want to tell me about it? Oh, do you want to lay it in my hands? And when we turn our worries into prayers, praise God, I'm no longer worrying, but I'm walking with Jesus. I'm hand in hand. We're in that garden. And the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost gets a hold of us again. Woo! Glory to God. Are you constantly worrying about your well being? How you'll be able to afford to keep going? When you can't pray, God will send someone to turn your worries into prayers. You ever been in that condition where you feel like you can't get a prayer through? 
All I've got is this on my mind. It's warring on my mind. I can't seem to penetrate. I, I've prayed in the altar and felt like I can't get anywhere. He meant, well, you can't do it on your own, but you can give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, and there'll be someone God lays you upon their heart, and they begin to pray. Amen. I walked out, used the restroom after Sunday school, Walked in and one of the men said, there's not a day goes by. I'm standing there. He said that I don't pray for that young man. And he must have been talking about me because I'm still young. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All the older fellas tell me I'm a baby. They've been doing that for 30 years. Amen. As long as I stay that way, I'll be all right. Hallelujah, but I appreciate those prayers. Amen, and I hunger and desire and need those prayers. God's always going to send someone along when I can't get a prayer through, when I'm so down, when I'm so overwhelmed with the things that worry me. I know there's somebody praying. There's somebody calling on God. Hallelujah, church. That's why we have one another, so that we can lift one another up. And the church keeps getting stronger and stronger when one is weak. Praise God, somebody gets a burden, a heavy burden to pray, and they cry out unto God, and the glory of the Lord, amen, is distributed. Woo! Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse King 17, verse 8 through 11 says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. He arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. I want you to notice in this passage that Elijah is praying. God's moved upon his heart. He doesn't know, man, a day or two before where he's about to go. All he knows is I've been out at the brook Cherith. Amen, I've been eating what ravens have been carrying me. I've been drinking from the brook. Amen, didn't even really know why he was there, but that God sent him there, and now he's sending him somewhere else. His faith is built up. He knows he's not going to go without a meal. He knows he's not going to go without a drink of water, even in a desert place, even in the driest place, because he trusts in God. God will supply all of your need. He's there and now his faith is built up and he's headed, amen, to this place where a widow woman is. Don't know what she's going through but she's worrying. Elijah is praying while the widow is worrying and God Almighty is presently working. Hallelujah. Woo! You know, it's the times that God's working we cannot see is so miraculous. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know how he's working. Many times we have felt so small because, man, we start complaining when all of the time God has a blessing in store, it just hasn't opened up yet. He hasn't opened that door yet, but it's already been supplied and it's already going to meet the need. And then when he does, we feel so small and we say, Lord, forgive me for worrying Forgive me for complaining. So the next time, instead of worrying and complaining, I want to turn my worries into prayers because I know that God's going to send someone. Matthew 6 and 8 says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Before you ask him. 
When you feel like you're not even able to get a prayer through, God has already supplied the need. Amen. He knows what you're going through. Just stop worrying. Stop worrying. Stop worrying and start praying. Just let God be God. I believe God enjoys, amen, doing what he does. I believe, man, that he likes to see our faces and the account, the countenance on our faces change when he pours out his glory. <laughs> oh, I remember a young man that would come to church and visit our revivals. He would testify, I'd ask him to testify just because I love to see the, the faces of the people. <laughs> He'd get excited, and amen. He had these long arms and long legs, and he'd, he man, start testifying, and pretty soon he's swinging them arms. Uh, he's kicking them legs. He's telling how God brought him out, how he was raised living on the streets, uh, and how God saved him and brought him out. Uh, amen. He's getting all excited. Uh, it ain't like some of these testimonies. Somebody stands up and depressed and says, well, I thank God I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and y'all pray. Amen. You, you want to ask, who asked them to testify? <laughs> but not Brother Bobby. He'd stand up and he'd start testifying on what God had brought him out of. Amen. And I could see folks. And I, I, I think I just done it just to, amen, you know, because I like to see folks' expressions. <laughs> Might be aggravating. I don't know. It's just that little in me that I like to see. And He'd get to testifying, and, and uh, hey, man, I'd watch those sitting by him. Hey, man, they'd start rearing back like this, or, or they'd slide down the pew afraid some of that's going to get on them. Hey, Amen. <laughs> but we need, hey, amen, that flowing in our hearts and in our lives. A testimony that says, I might not have anything, but look what's waiting for me. Hallelujah. And constantly, Jesus on my mind. I'm going to stop worrying about this and that and the other. It all belongs to God anyway. Praise the Lord. I'm just a pilgrim. Amen. Passing through. This is not my home. I'm searching for a city whose builder and maker is God. And church, that must be my mentality. Praise the Lord. We don't belong here. Amen. We belong in a place called heaven. Woo. Hallelujah. And it's just around the next corner. Amen. Get out of my way, devil. I'm walking through. I'm feeling the power. I'm feeling the anointing. God's touching me one more time. And he takes all of your worries and your doubts and your fears because you cast on him. Your every care. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe you're worrying about the rapid decline of the morals in our nation. How many said in the past 10 years, well, what's this world coming to? Maybe you made the statement of so-and-so or my mom or my dad would have seen that. They'd roll over in their grave. So upset. And are we worrying about the decline, the spiritual decline of our nation? Amen. But the Bible says don't worry, just pray. <laughs> the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24 and 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us. When shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Church, the coming of the Lord is our blessed hope. This is what we long for. This is what we're waiting for. We're enduring hardness. We're living in this world. We're going through a lot. But the coming of the Lord is just around the corner. And that's what we need on our minds constantly. It's our hope. And Jesus began to reveal all that shall come to pass. Matthew 24 and verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Said there'll be earthquakes in divers places. We've never seen it on this scale. The storms, the hurricanes, even this past month, we've never seen it. The fires that are all over America, we've never seen it quite like this. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hope starts building up in our hearts. We're crying out unto God. He said, be, see that ye be not troubled. What he was saying is don't worry about anything. Just pray. Just call on the Lord. Amen. God will keep you. It was the eye of, which one was it? Irma came over our house a few weeks ago. Oh, we was praying. <laughs> I looked outside and them big 100-foot pine trees. Is, it looks like the, the tops of them are about to touch the ground. They're bending over and backwards this way and that way. Hey, Amen. We got big pine trees not 12, 15 feet from the house. Hey, Amen. And if they were to fall through the house, they're coming through because they're big trees. And we're looking out there and that wind's a blowing and all of a sudden you could hear a big thud. Hey, Amen. One of them big trees fell down. Oh, but we knew which one it was. Hey, Amen. And it fell in the right direction and then another one and then another one and then another one and every one of those trees amen that were around the house fell in the other direction why because God's mighty hand is all around us and he said don't worry just pray I'm telling you in the tightest situation you're gonna pray but it will continue to pray even though it might not seem bad right now oh glory to God keep praying and crying out unto God because God will come on the scene and he will protect and whatever it may be that weighs heavy on your heart instead of allowing those things to come inward to distract you amen turn all those things upward and lay them in the hands of the Lord wow Every time you start worrying, that's what the devil wants you to do to distract you from doing the will of God. Amen. wonder how Brother Turner felt earlier this year when he had to have that surgery, that disturbance, that detour, that something. I'm sure he worried a little bit. I'm sure. But he's doing such a great work. Amen. And the devil don't like it. And so he tries and tries and tries. Amen. But now he's already out preaching, praise God, and glorifying the Lord. Just got back from Israel, about to go to fire on the mountain. I'm excited about that. Amen. Church, we don't need to worry. It's all in the hands of the Lord. What we need to do is pray. Don't let those things come inward. If I never let them touch my heart, if I never let them get in my mind, if I'll just turn them upward and hand them to the hand of the Lord. Oh, just place it in the hands of the Lord. You remember that old camp meeting song? Amen. Lay it in the hands of the Lord. His arms are open wide to us. That if we'll just give it all to the Lord, we don't have to worry anymore. We don't have to worry of the pastor anymore. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to touch the Lord. And God's going to come on the scene. And in closing, Matthew 11 and 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest in the Lord. Fret not. Worry not. Don't worry about anything. And if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus and our hearts in that prayer closet, brother, 
Amen. God's going to meet every need. He'll supply. He'll bless. Amen. We don't have to allow people to irritate us anymore. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. You said something about my father-in-law. Well, you know, he don't have to worry anymore because he's over on the other side. Amen. We don't have to worry either because he's on the other side. Amen. I don't have to pray through about that anymore. Praise God. Man, he put me through this and that and the other. But it might have been just God, Brother Tim, saying, you just need to get closer to me. And God always makes a way and touches our lives and our hearts. Would you stand with me here today? You've heard my word. My word is accurate. My word is powerful. My word is truth. My word is victory. But you must act upon what you hear. Don't let it fall on no ears. But open up your ears and your heart and put it into action. Bring your burdens to me every time. Every time. For I have summoned you to come. I have reached forth my hand. And I have spoken to you through my word, but you have not heeded my call. Listen to my voice and trust me. For in this hour, I will reveal my glory, and I will claim the answer. And this world shall know that I am the creator of all things, and that I am God. They will see it, but they'll see it through you, because you don't worry. You pray and I'll be there. I said, I'll be there. I'll be there. Say to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you come and turn your worries into prayers? Would you come and trade some of those worries for the answers from heaven? Let's fill these altars this morning. And let's let God have his way in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Bring it to the Lord, oh man. Bring it to the Lord. Lay it at Jesus' feet. Leave it here this morning. Don't carry it out of here. The Lord's going to answer your prayers. The Holy Ghost has said he will. And God's going to answer. This is a message from God for somebody. Listen to him this morning. Let the Holy Ghost do the work right now. God's working. It's going to be different. Things are going to change. God's going to do the driving. The devil's not going to have the authority. The power belongs to God. Your victory's in him. Lean on him right now. Trust him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. 
In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Call unto God and he'll answer and he'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. Call on him in the day of trouble. He'll deliver you and you shall glorify him. Thank you, the Messiah. Thank you, the Messiah. Hold up a yada, a yada, a yada, a kataya. Woo! Heal of the most shunning Heal of the most shunning Woo! Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Touch her this morning, God. Please just touch this young lady. I'm so glad God needs you. My good, I want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. I want to say, God, I want to say, I give my heart to you. I surrender to you. I believe you've forgiven me, and I accept it. I accept it in the name of Jesus. I accept your salvation. Now praise him for it. Say thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. Thank you for delivering me. Now I know. Just raise your hands up and praise him right now. That's it. That's it. Praise God. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Just stand up here. Stand up and lift up a pile. Lift up to Jesus. I'm so glad. You're free now. You've been born on high. You've been forgiven. Your sins are gone. Said he made it for my Jesus. God Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. He brought Praise me out. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I knew that he would. Now I know no defeat. I'm strong when I'm weak. God gave me a song. I can sing along. The devil made it for bad. But I'm so glad God made it for my good. But I'm so glad he made it for my good. Oh, yes, he made it for. Gave me a song that I can sing along. The devil made it for bad, but I'm so glad that God made it for my good. God saved this young lady this morning. Everybody say praise the Lord. That's Brother Hayes' granddaughter. God saved her. <laughs> praise him. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. She got born again. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody, praise him. Praise him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something. That is one of the greatest messages you'll ever hear. Did you know that? It's simple, but it's profound. Because that's what we do. We're doing exactly what he's preaching. We're worrying ourselves to death instead of praying. You know what I do when I have a problem? I go to prayer with it. I don't want to carry that mess. I don't want it bogging me down. I want to leave it at the altar. I've got a whole church to worry about. People and the way they do and act sometimes and you try to help them and they don't want to help. They just go their own way. That hurts you. But you've got to overcome that. 
We can't give up because somebody else does. We can't follow their path. We got to keep on praying. We got to keep on praying. The church world as a whole has lost it. They're wandering away from truth as a whole. They've lost it. But I can't go that way. I got to keep on praying. Keep on praying. Now come, raise your hands up and stand and praise God for prayer. Praise God for the avenue of prayer, the means by which we can reach heaven through the personality of Jesus Christ as the interceder between God and men. Praise him right now. Wonderful message. You see, God just sent Brother Pooler here to tell us that we need to pray. I was ready to preach, but he had another thing planned out. So God bless you. Come early for prayer. Don't eat too much lunch. Don't dream too long in your nap. We love you. Thank you for being here. God bless you so much. Every one of you, we love you.